What's the worst diet advice that you've ever heard? Now, I know I'm probably not one to stand up here and tell you what is good and bad diet advice, as I've been a yo-yo dieter nearly my whole life. But according to various sources online, there are some common advice out there that's fairly bad. The first one is that you need to eliminate some food group completely. Often it's fats and carbs. That being said, there are healthy fats out there, and carbs can be a great source of energy. So a lot of sources say that's bad diet advice. Another are those fad diets that pop up. Often these fad diets come up and they say, just eat this one food source and that's it. Except the problem, although you might lose some weight, is that you're missing out on key nutrients that your body needs to be healthy. And the other that is often out there is extreme calorie restriction, right? If you eat this much food, but the problem is you, you again, might lose weight, but you will perhaps also lose muscle mass and negatively shift your metabolism. I think we've all heard some bad diet advice out there, and maybe you're even saying, Pastor, you're giving us bad diet advice. That stuff works. There's bad diet advice. The best advice when it comes to having a healthy diet is a diversity of healthy foods and portion control. In our reading for today, we receive an encouragement that may sound like bad diet advice. We are told, don't eat a well-balanced diet. Don't eat, in the spiritual sense, a variety of foods, but eat this one food and eat it to your fill. This one food is the bread of life, and eating it is believing in Jesus. That is our encouragement for today. Don't have a well-balanced diet. These past couple of weeks, we have been continuing in what is called the Bread of Life Discourse in which Jesus talks about believing in him as he is the bread that has come down from heaven. So we saw that this is the bread that truly endures and gives enduring life. We also saw that this is the bread that gives more than bodily sustenance. Actually, eating this bread gives you wisdom as well. And we continue to see the blessings that we receive through faith in Jesus Christ, who is the bread of life. And therefore, this encouragement as we continue in this bread of life discourse is to eat this bread and eat it alone, not adding anything else. As we consider this text for today, we can split up the text to read into it and see three questions that pop up. These three questions, they give us the force of the narrative. So Jesus had talked about how he is the bread of life, and people should eat this bread alone. And the first question is saying, this is a hard word. Who can listen to it? Now, what Jesus said might have sounded very offensive to the ear. Perhaps you caught it as we read through the gospel. Eat Jesus' flesh and drink his blood. That would sound very offensive hearing it for the first time. Although there would be offense in the word, I don't think... That was the hard part that they reacted to. Yes, they they wanted to know how they could eat this man's flesh and drink his blood, but Jesus doesn't answer that question. 
He rather shows them the importance of doing this. He doesn't say how to eat his flesh and drink his blood. Instead, he says, rather, you must do this. So it was a hard word for them to listen to. A hard word to hear. Because the force of what Jesus was saying is that they must eat his bread, his flesh, drink his blood alone. And this means to believe in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. The force of Jesus' narrative here is saying that he is the only way to salvation. And that is the hard word for someone to listen to. It is hard for someone to hear that Jesus is the only way to be saved. In our day, that's certainly hard to hear, because what about my very kind neighbors? They don't believe in Jesus. You're saying they are not saved? In their day as well, a hard word to listen to. That's that first question that they had asked. And what Jesus had said led many people to stop following him. They didn't want to follow this Jesus who said offensive things at times, who said things that were hard to listen to. So many people, they left Jesus and did not continue to follow him. And when those disciples left Jesus, that's when the second question comes up. Jesus asked the twelve, you do not want to leave also, do you? Do they want to abandon Jesus because of the hard saying that he is the only way to salvation? Many other people had done it. So the question Jesus had for them, are you going to leave me too? In our day, that's a question to consider as well. You don't want to leave Jesus too, do you? In the past 25 years, there have been many Christians who have stopped going to church. Do you want to leave because this is a hard word that says things people are doing is sinful, it's hard to stand on, that says that Jesus is the only way? And it continues to the third question. And in this third question, we hear the statement of faith that the Holy Spirit had worked to come out of Peter. So Jesus says here how one can confess faith in him and as Lord, even though it's hard to hear because God gives it. God grants this faith God grants the ability for one to confess their faith in Jesus Christ and him as Lord. And God granted that ability to confess the faith to Peter. And Peter asks the question, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Why would he go to anyone else? Why would he go anywhere else? Yeah, maybe Jesus said things that were hard to hear, like eat my flesh and drink my blood. Maybe Jesus had hard sayings that were hard to listen to, like believe in me and believe in me alone. But by faith given by the Holy Spirit, Peter knew that Jesus was the only one who had the word of everlasting life that there was tremendous blessing in Christ Jesus. So that expression, that third question, to whom shall we go? No one else. Peter had been brought to the conviction that Jesus was the Holy One of God. He was the bread of life that had come down from heaven. He is the one who gave him sustaining life who gave sustaining life to all who ate this bread, to those who, who ate his flesh and drank his blood. This is his flesh and blood that he gave for the world, 
for their salvation. Following this, Jesus would give his flesh on the cross for the salvation of all who believe in him. As John wrote this narrative, you know John knew that as he talks about what Jesus said, seeing the fulfillment of Jesus' very own words. Those who eat this bread and eat it alone, those who believe in Jesus Christ, they have eternal life as he lived, died, and rose for them. So that is the encouragement today. Don't eat a well-balanced diet, but eat this bread and eat it alone. What if you tried to go about this life with just eating one food? It probably wouldn't work very well in the physical sense, right? Well, there is one food that would have the best chance. It's an egg. Although diets used to say don't eat eggs because of the cholesterol not that long ago, now they're saying that eggs are a complete food because they have the protein, they have many vitamins and minerals that you need. But if you would eat just eggs, you'd still be missing out on some things you need. By the way, that's fiber and vitamin C. So if you're going to go ahead with this one food diet, you at least need to supplement it with an orange, which has both of those. But in the physical sense, you can't go about eating just one food. In the spiritual sense, you have to eat just this one food because there is danger, there is poison in the spiritual eating of anything else. So brothers and sisters... Let us have a poor diet in a sense. Let us not eat a well-balanced diet. Let us believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and him alone because he is the one who has the words of everlasting life. He is the one who gives us salvation. In this life of this spiritual eating, there are some foods that we ought to avoid. These are Junk food, rotten food, fast food, and empty calories. Junk food are the things that look so nice and appealing. That would really help me out, but they don't really fill. Many of the gifts in this world can fall under that spiritual junk food. Relying on riches or princes to save me, but that spiritual food will just give you an upset stomach and will not fill you in the way you need. And the spiritual food of rotten food. This is the old rancid food that's been around forever. But if you eat it, as would happen with eating some spoiled food, it will make you sick. One of these rancid, old, false teachings that's out there is called work righteousness, the belief that I need to do something, I can do something to save myself. And the sad thing is that's made its way into a lot of spiritual recipes out there. There's spiritual fast food. Spiritual fast food is kind of like going to someone who's spiritual but not religious or the half-hearted engagement in Eastern religions that has become so common in our society, thinking I can have a quick way to being right with whatever deity is out there. But there's no quick solutions to religiosity. And then the empty calories. The empty calories of spiritual food are eating those things that appear to be just what you need, but it doesn't fill. Kind of like the people that look to the outward trappings of Christianity, or maybe superstition. But we know the problem is that tradition and ritual, apart from Christ, has no use for us. We don't want to waste our time eating spiritually empty calories. 
There are many dangers out there in this spiritual eating. We know this, and that's why we are directed by our Lord Jesus Christ to eat the bread of life, to believe in him alone, because he is the only one that sustains. And brothers and sisters, people of Emmanuel, you know this. You know to avoid these false teachings, these false religions out there, and look to Christ alone. Yet sometimes, don't we Christians even have temptations to have a cheat day on our meal? Uh, aren't we tempted in some ways to look away from Jesus? Maybe the old rancid food of work righteousness can be a temptation for you or for me. To think that the things that I do are what make me right with God. To think that my works are needed to add on to what Jesus has done so I can truly have confidence that I am saved. Don't eat that rancid old spiritual food. For Christians also, the empty calories can be a temptation for that cheat day too. To think, hey, you know what's going to make me right with God? The fact that my kids go to a Christian school or the fact that I come to a church on Sunday mornings. But those traditions, those rituals, they don't save. That's not what brings us to a right relationship with the Lord. Whatever junk food out there might catch your eye, we need to notice that. Because the inclination, the desire, the craving for these false teachings, even that is sinful, and it's a sin that we need to confess. And perhaps you and I also have fallen into temptation when we've trusted in princes and riches instead of looking to God, when we've trusted in our works and ourselves rather than the only one who can truly save. So if you have indulged in this spiritual junk food, what you need to do is confess and repent of this sin. And then in repentance, look to the one alone who has salvation for you. The, the bread that came down from heaven. Look to Jesus Christ who gave his flesh for the life of the world, whose blood you are to drink, which is shed on the cross to wash away all of your sins and my sins. Let us look to Jesus Christ in faith the faith granted to us by the Holy Spirit, and graciously receive this wonderful gift, the bread of life, knowing that we have eternal life in Him alone. He who lived, died, and rose for us. So don't eat a well-balanced diet, but eat this bread alone, that is, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. In this life of faith, we, we know that we are to look to Jesus. And we are brought to faith in Jesus by the Holy Spirit. This section is talking about faith in Jesus. That is what eating his flesh and drinking his blood is. And faith we are brought to by the Holy Spirit. Now this language, for us who know what is to come in Jesus' ministry can be reminiscent of a wonderful gift that God has given us to strengthen that faith. Although the language is a little bit different, we know that God has given us his sacraments, one of them, the Lord's Supper, which we will receive today, is a gift through which that faith is strengthened, where we will get to eat bread and wine, and in, with, and under it is the body and blood of Jesus given to us for the forgiveness of our sins. So as we live this life, eating the bread of life, an important part of that is also receiving his sacrament. 
being strengthened in our faith as we look to him alone. It may sound like bad diet advice, but the encouragement we receive today is don't eat a well-balanced diet. Eat the bread of life and eat it to your fill. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. Amen.